Everyone's showing up. Come on in, make yourself comfortable. I'll get started in a couple of minutes. I'm just seeing who else is going to join us before we start. <clears throat> And if you want to turn your cameras on, that's good. So I at least see some faces out there, not just blank screens. That'd be great. All right, a couple more minutes, and then we'll get started. It may just be a cozy group today, which is fine with me. No camera on mic. Okay, Carol. Well, hopefully you'll be able to listen at least. And uh, the replay, this will be recorded, of course, as Mia has asked. So that way you'll have the ability to watch later on. But Philip, you don't have a camera? Okay. Well, at least you have the microphones. If you want to respond or ask questions later on, we can do that. Oh, another one coming in. All right. All right, I'm going to give another minute or so just to see if anyone else is coming in. Oops, sort of messages and things here. Okay, thank you for that, Carol. Okay, well, again, this will be recorded so you can listen to it later on at your own time and I'm not sure how Mia's setting up so people can ask questions, like type questions on the recording. I'm not sure yet. So this is where the real action is going to happen, I hope. <laughs> we shall see. All right, let's get started. It's close enough to the top of the hour. And hang on a second. <clears throat> this is the first time I've spoken to anybody today, so my voice is a little bit croaky. So I apologize if it cracks up a little bit. Uh, Mia did message me. She's actually out at the moment. She'll be coming in later into the group. Uh, I'm not sure what time that'll be, so I'm going to run solo initially. So first of all, thanks for joining me. Welcome to today's class in the Self-Love Revolution group. My name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't already know that. Um, I am going to be teaching, I think, a total of four times during the next two, two three months. So I'll be back for more later on. Um, by way of introduction, before I get to the topic, I am a love and relationship coach. Me and I are actually business partners with the publishing company we run, and we both collaborated on the first book, self Love Revolution. So we've been friends for about 10 years, so she knows me well, which is why she was gracious enough to invite me to speak here and be part of this um, ongoing series. I am uh, I'm a best-selling author, love and relationship coach. I'm extremely passionate about supporting women being in the feminine. As my branding says, I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. So my work is really about transforming the planet because most men don't respect women, unfortunately, which I'm adamant about changing. Um, and so my work and my coaching, I work with women to help them really help them heal the hearts. Really, you know, I'm saying really a couple of times, okay. I help women heal the hearts and attract the relationship they really deserve, desire, and are worthy of. And this opportunity is to really help you understand some of the paradigms we get into in relationships and in life in general, which is why today's topic is, it's not really about them. This is a lesson I've had to learn many times over, so hopefully this will help you as well. And what this is going to speak to is a couple of things that I'm very passionate about um, disrupting, which is codependency and projections, which sound like fancy terms, but I'll break them down and make them easy for you. And the biggest challenge I think we face in life is that we are raised in a culture that makes codependency normal. One of my favorite quotes to use to um, 
<laughs> to make this point is from Jerry Maguire in the movie where he says, you complete me. That is the, the, the probably the most direct, blunt and, ex, and expressive statement of codependency. Being codependent means that we're putting up a permission in somebody else's hands. It's almost like giving somebody else your puppet strings. And little sidebar, I've, I've done a lot of Facebook lives over the years and put them onto YouTube. So I've talked about this topic more than once because it's come up a few times. And so we are, and I'm, I include myself because I've done this myself, um, been emotionally upset because somebody else did something that I didn't like, or they didn't do something that I did want and that upset me as well. So codependency is um, one of the most common things that we get emotionally caught up in, particularly in relationships because that's the most intimate connection we have and also the most conditional relationship we're used usually you know when somebody down the street does something it may be like us oh, a bit annoying but it won't affect us but a primary partner can really impact our lives so when i say it's not really about them what i'm speaking to is how we navigate through that in life so that we can be more excuse me someone else coming in we can be more whole and more able to respond to life versus react to it so if you're somebody who's basically been caught up in reaction a lot this is going to be for you and I'll also explain why it talks to talk about self-love, because one of the things about self-love I find is people have a good way of talking, or should, excuse me, giving lip service to self-love. But when stuff happens, stuff happens, we start forgetting to love ourselves. We get into anger or upset or hurt feelings or distress because our lover didn't put the cap on the toothpaste or was they crashed the car. I mean, it can be anything in that spectrum but we get triggered for, for sometimes no reason at all. And so what we're doing though, is giving our emotional well-beings management to somebody else. I'm, I'm looking for another way to explain it because for me, the biggest thing is that we forget that we have full autonomy of our own emotions. All of us here in this group, everyone on the planet has, or can, I hate the word control in this context, but has dominion over how we feel. One of the things I've talked about before, before in, my, in my, my own clients is you can be happy for no reason. It doesn't require somebody else to be in your life to be happy. It doesn't require you to have the right job to be happy or have all the money in the world to be happy. You can be happy because you are. I know um, Mia talks much more in spiritual terms. I do as well. And for me, that one of that pieces is that we are whole loving beings independent of any circumstance including any relationship or lack of relationship so my um passionate message because <laughs> they come through this way is to really get clear that i have and we all have dominion over our feelings unfortunately our school education and our parents didn't teach us this usually at least rarely so so we don't know we can do this. And so part of what self-love for me is about is being a place where we have compassion for ourselves. And when things happen in our lives, not necessarily to us, but in it, we participate in it, something happens that upsets us, is we know how to navigate back to being a place of loving, of happiness, of joy, of peace. Part of it can be sometimes to do some forgiveness work, and I may get to that later on. That's a bigger topic that's for another time. But the recognition is that who we are is already whole, is loving, is happy. Life doesn't always treat us that way though. So an example, I have to think of doing a pull from one of my clients was a woman, actually, yes, this will, this will work. One of my clients, I'll keep all names out of it for privacy and respect, was divorced for 10 years before we started working together. And she still had a massive amount of energy tied up in her past marriage. She hadn't forgiven him because of all the things he had done, according to her, that had broken up their relationship. Now, one of the things about this work is that you start to have less investment in making somebody else wrong. And this is one of the things I had to work with her on. Okay, we're gonna go there as well. I'm just seeing pieces of the puzzle. Excuse me, let me, let me do a little um, meta piece here. A lot of what I talk about comes through and then it then it sort of makes space for something else to drop in and something else to drop in. So 
bear with me as I navigate this in myself. I don't have a script, by the way. This is all what's present for me. When we are attached to how we think somebody else is wrong, which is, lip, which is technically called resentment, that person basically has, can, has um, an impact in our emotional well-being, well-being, excuse me. Resentment, to technically call it, <clears throat> is the best, way, the best metaphor for that is taking poison, expecting the other person to die. That's how resentment works. And you may have heard that term before. So in this case with, with my client, she had spent 10 years resenting her husband for something he'd done. All she was doing was being in a place of upset and hurt feelings for 10 years. He wasn't in her life anymore. There wasn't any alimony. There wasn't any, any continued stuff. I think she still had his last name, I believe, if I remember correctly now. But that was all. So for 10 years, she was carrying around this, this, this toxicity in her system, and it is toxic, feeling that he was somehow wronged her and she hadn't forgiven him. She also hadn't dated anybody in 10 years. I wonder why. So my work with her was largely to come to a place of wholeness by forgiving what was going on. So basically to see what she'd been doing, first of all, because awareness is a big piece of this, and to really start to disengage her hurt feelings from him so she could heal them. It wasn't pretty, just to be clear. It was so functional because what she got to at the time we'd worked together was to realize that she was whole again. She had been carrying around this wound inside that made her incomplete for 10 years. That was 10 years of her life. She had basically given up wholeness, freedom, joy, love, and happiness. And through the work we did together, she really got to see who she really was now. The 10 years are already gone. We couldn't fix that, but we should at least make peace with her past and then become whole again. And now she's onto a new relationship. She's dating. She was dating for a while and there's a new relationship because she started to own her own self again. If you get caught up into this pattern of resentment of being attached to somebody else's demise because they upset you, they hurt you, they made your life, I mean, me being in a relationship with somebody made your life a living hell. I, it's happened for friends of mine, I know, and for clients as well. It still isn't up to, it is not up to them to control your life anymore. So my, my, passionate message in this again expression about this is to learn to hold have wholeness for yourself there's another piece what was it ah yes i i by the way sidebar i i co-lead a um web show every thursday um called let's talk about dating with a friend of mine and last week and the week before we talked about resentment you will talked about three other pieces so the first week of this so two weeks ago, we talked about resentment and blame because blame comes in, into that same thing because we do end up having a habit of blaming other people for what they did wrong so we can feel better. That's another one we do, which is codependent. We think we're feeling better because we make them wrong. So we're better than them. But it's a false illusion because, again, we are now dependent upon somebody else's being bad for us to feel good. Not healthy either. The week we, this past week we did was on the internal ones. The flip side of resentment is guilt. I'll explain how those work in a moment. The flip side of blame is shame because we tend to make somebody else wrong. So we blame them for something so we can feel better. But then we should make shame for ourselves because we think we did something wrong. Same thing, different direction. So let me break down resentment. I'm giving you a lot of technical pieces, but it will make sense as I explain how it works. Resentment and guilt are two sides of the same coin. Resentment is judgment thrown at somebody else. Guilt is, is judgment thrown at ourselves. Now, the way this works, and I remember learning this from a seminar many, many years ago, is that we generally believe we're good people, authentic. Ultimately, we may not act like it. We may not have a happy life necessarily, but we believe ultimately we're good people. But when we do something, like we let somebody do something to us that makes us feel bad, we have a conflict inside. Good person, bad experience. Or we do something bad to somebody else. We have a good person do, do a bad experience. This doesn't fit together in consciousness. Basically, being a good person, doing a bad thing, something wrong with that. So what we do to allow that to become, come into homeostasis is you put a wall in between. When somebody says something to us and we resent them, but we're a good person, we put a thing in between called resentment. Resentment is an ability to allow us to maintain our sense of being a good person and the feelings of judgment at the same time. Guilt is the same thing where we are knowing a good person, 
but we feel like we did a bad thing. So we can reconcile the good person doing a bad thing together by having resent, by having guilt in between. It's a coping mechanism, but it's not functional. I mean, we used it ever. I mean, I, I was raised Jewish, so guilt was part of my makeup. But we're raised with these skills all the time because that's the way we live. The way to, way to be free, though, is to reconcile the guilt and resentment by forgiving what happened. All that stuff we're carrying inside, that toxicity, that that upset, is tied to one thing, which is judgment. I'm, I'm giving you 25 years of my training in about 15 minutes, so I'll, I'll slow it down a little bit so you can get this, and I'll make, make sure you have the value from this. Judgment is one of these weapons we use to upset ourselves and to limit our ability to be free and to judge ourselves as worse than, literally judge ourselves as worse than other people. Judgment, whether you spell it with an E or without, is a perspective where we don't think we're good enough, ultimately. And whether we judge other people or we judge ourselves, it's the same thing because we are the one judging. Doesn't matter where we're aiming the judgment, out there or in here, we're still the one judging. So that's where we do the work. And the way to cure, cure, interesting, the way we resolve judgment is with forgiveness. And I may, we may get to a forgiveness practice later on in the session. I want to make sure that I explain the, front, the structure first. And so when you're with a person who's upsetting you and you are feeling the upset, you can also, you may also judge them at the same time. Because being upset and judgment aren't all the same, but they do tend to go together. By the way, if you have any questions, put them in the comments, or if you want to interrupt me in the way, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to lecture the whole time. If you've got questions specific to you, please ask them. I will definitely work with you. Because I want to make sure this is landing for you. So judgment. It is something that we have in life. The, the, the way I would frame it was, if you think that um, when we gauge something as good or bad, that's an evaluation. But we put energy onto it, that's judgment. It's almost like two different things. We say, oh, well, that's better than this is, that's okay. But when I'm really attached to this being better than this, that's judgment. Or more, if we think this is worse than this, then it's judgment. Judgment generally aimed as a negative thing. It's a negative tool. It's part of the um, entrapment we have in our own lives. Like guilt, like shame. Judgment is all part of the same package, which is demeaning our own self-esteem and knocking down our own sense of self-support. And in my work, a lot of my work is about self-support, self-love, of course, and self-confidence. So all of that comes through when we start releasing guilt, shame, resentment, blame, and judgment. So when I say it's not about the other person, it literally isn't, because all of that stuff I'm talking about is inside of us. The other person may have triggered it, but it's our reaction to it that is key. Are you in reaction or are you in response? You can use that as a, as a mantra when you're in your daily life. If you're on the freeway and somebody cuts you up, do you react to it or do you respond by getting out of the way? It's all choice every single point of the, point of the day. But for many of us, we've been trained, our own training over many, many years of being in the default to react to everything that happens, to be trigger happy. That learning how to respond is a new practice we need to learn how to do. And I wasn't good at it when I first started, just to be clear, I had to learn this skill over years. It wasn't born this way by any means. But what I recognized over the work I've done, and with my clients especially, is that we can change our own self-image um, by seeing ourselves as caring people who occasionally make mistakes. Because, as I say, none of us are perfect. We're all perfect, but we don't always do perfect things. Let me say it that way. In spiritual terms, from my own background, I have a, a master's degree in spiritual psychology. We talked about being spiritual beings, having a human experience. And humanity isn't perfect, except it's perfectly imperfect if you want to be fancy about it. So in this journey, we make mistakes. But the key is, do you then nail yourself to the ground, like, I screwed up, I'm upset, I'm not happy, or do you say, oh, okay, I made a mistake? One key thing, what did I learn from this? How can I choose differently? One of the things about this experience of life, as one of my other teachers called it, is everything that happens to us, with us, around us, the way you frame it is it's everything is an interesting evolutionary experience. That was his framing. I loved it because it was so like tilt shift when he said it. It's like interesting evolutionary experience. What does he mean? It's like, what if everything that happens in our lives is an interesting evolutionary experience? What can we learn from it? How can we see something as that was interesting? 
versus, oh, that's horrible. Even with current things going on with, with, with coronavirus or things that are happening in politics or things happening in your business world or whatever it is, how can you see those as learning opportunities? Not to say you should put up with anything, because one of the things I want to be clear about is none of this makes you a victim, by the way, because sometimes you say, well, I've got to put up with everything, but you do think, no. Forgiveness, by the way, is not about letting somebody else do something to you again. Forgiveness is about letting yourself off the hook so you don't have to put up with it again. So I'm very um, adamant that all these skills that I talk about, all these things are working, give you a more empowered way of living and also make you less willing to participate in other people's crap. <laughs> but it's exactly. So any questions so far before I go to the next piece? I'm going to just throw so much at you the last 15, 20 minutes. Hi, Metri. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you, Barry. Um, so I have trouble forgiving. And the last point you said, you know, forgiveness, it's it's not about like, you know, accepting someone or like, it's basically protecting ourselves so that we don't, you know, have to do the same nonsense again. Mm -hmm. So how, like, there are certain things I have, like deep wounds, you know, um, that are really hard to, to it's hard to for, forgive, you know, certain things. Uh, mm -hmm. at least for me. So I, I struggle with, with forgiveness and I do hold resentment and it's to a point, you know, where it's affecting my health now. So mm -hmm. how do you, how do you deal with that? Like, how do you, how do you practice that every day in your life so that, you know, you can get a step closer to it each day? Very good question. And I appreciate you sharing that with you. Thank you. Forgiveness is, let me explain what, how forgiveness, what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is the ability to forgive your own judgments for what happened. It doesn't forgive what happened. It doesn't forgive them for doing anything. So that's one thing. You're not letting them off the hook. You're letting yourself off the hook. So forgiveness is a self-release technique. It's almost, it's almost as if the judgments put you in a prison cell that you have the key to. And forgiveness is the key to open the door and let yourself out. Nothing to do with anybody else. Ultimately, the thing, this is the thing about forgiveness people forget. Forgiveness is not to say, well, forgive them for the no, the, they know not, excuse me, I'm trying to say this cat really. Forgive them for they know not what they do. No, forgiveness is forgiving yourself for making judgments that are hurting you. You can still see that what they did is wrong. The thing that, again, forgiveness, forgiveness is not forgetfulness. Forgiving somebody for what they did, excuse me, forgiving the judgments you placed against somebody for what they did, that's the key. And forgiving the judgments means that you can be free and not carry on that weight inside. It doesn't have anything to do with them. What they did, did, it's history, it's done. And they may need to pay a price, they may need to be punished. I don't know, that's not part of the conversation in here, but you don't need to be punished anymore. As you said, it affected your health. And that's one of the things, like said, resentment is like taking poison, expecting the other person to die. That's a metaphor. But in reality, when you are carrying judgment, resentment, blame, guilt, shame, or, or any of those things, you're putting toxicity in your own system. So your body will be suffering on some level from it, whether it's just your mental state or your physical state. So. I would strongly suggest that you look at forgiveness added to your regimen, whatever you're doing now to take care of yourself, include forgiveness for yourself for the judgment you placed. I have a, um, a worksheet I can send you if you want. You can, I'll, I'll give you my email address. And at some point you can send me an email asking for it. I'll send you the worksheet that I, I used from my own graduate program. That basically goes through the steps how to forgive because all of it is for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would really appreciate that. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so, that, so that's why I'm making that very clear. Forgiveness is a self-supportive and a self-releasing technique. There's a, there's a book by um, uh, Colin, Colin Tipping called Radical, called Radical Self-Forgiveness. He's actually got two now, excuse me. Radical Forgiveness is the first book, Radical Self-Forgiveness is the second book. He has a worksheet on his website. It's a free one you can get on his website, which okay. is a worksheet you can walk through. It's, about, it's, a, it's a long winded process. Um, I've got it as well. I can send you a copy of it. I, I downloaded the PDF from his website, so it's not mine, but it's his. I can send it to you. But I have my own worksheet that I've developed for my own graduate program to send you as well. So either one of those help you through the steps. The thing about forgiveness, and I want to preface this, by the way, is that forgiveness is not a mental process. So it means that to do it, you have to be in a feeling state. So part of my counsel when I work with clients is to, first of all, you have to really be clear of what the judgments are you're carrying because you can't forgive what you don't see in turn. So what are the judgments you're carrying against that person or that situation or yourself? Bring in compassion for yourself because the forgiveness, has, the forgiveness is a, a tool that the power for the tool is compassion. 
people say, well, I forgive myself for judging this, that, and the other. It doesn't land. When you start to feel your own compassion for yourself, and then you forgive, you can actually say the words and then feel the shift happening internally. Compassion is one of these gifts, skills, um, tools that we have that is a vital piece of our freedom. But many people, unfortunately, don't, they don't know it. They, they're so stuck up here, mostly men, to be honest, are stuck up here in the heads. So forgiveness is not something that men practice that much, at least not effectively. So thank you for your question, Metri. I hope that helps. That helps greatly. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Nalu, it looks like you're about to ask a question. Yeah, I know. I've got so many. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Uh, I don't want to go okay. into um, my codependency, but um, I feel that I've been made into a codependence uh, mm. spouse because of my 24-year-old um, marriage with a, a man that's very controlling and manipulative. I don't really want to say the, the, the big word because then I feel that I am um, shooting bullets at him so i do need to just be careful not to be too negative about him but i basically i just want to go over something and see what you feel that happened to me so basically i went into my wound of not feeling good enough and then you meet someone who's basically using and and abusing you mentally and so for me um the bottom word fell out when he said um before he left for work, the towels and sheets are dirty. Uh, you have to wash them today. And he walked away. Mm. And I was shouting on the top of my lungs and saying, I want a divorce. I mean, for me, there was just like the 24 years was like a volcano. So he didn't know what happened. He said, mm -hmm. well, I'm working my hands up. You need to do the house and that dirty. So I said, hello, you have hands too. He said, well, it's your job. That's why did you do this? And I said, you what I that became a terrible row um i immediately booked a flight to my mother in holland with took my special needs son i came back went into the barn apartment and then i started feeling guilty i was right. like what what did i do i mean i look like a mad woman of course he's doing his best and i i i he's providing for me and so of course i had to look into like why am i reacting like that so i think i just felt like and that I, um, two things, I felt no respect. I felt like a doormat, but then I also felt really like, but I'm standing up for myself and I'm setting boundaries and I'm gonna, I'm taking my power back and it has to start. So it was really conflicting, but I did go back to him after a few things happened. But now a year later, I'm already uh, separated from him for five months. So it, it was like the start of really something that we're going in. But I've been going through all the shame and blame and guilt and, and sadness, a lot of sadness, and then definitely anger. And, and also what, what uh, Metri says, uh, a lot of physical things. Uh, after I left him, boom, mm -hmm. I had a liver biopsy, I had a broken leg. Now, name it. Uh, it's just, uh, but now I'm healing more and more. It's like- oh, I'm glad, to, glad yeah. to hear that, yes. So I wanted just to see your take on the whole- <laughs> Well, a, cu a couple of things that a couple of, one thing, a couple of things stood out that I haven't talked about yet, by the way, is, is about how men and women function. <clears throat> when you blew up and he didn't know what to do with it, <laughs> part of that is because of the way men and women are wired, not, not you specifically, just the way generally men and women, men or women are wired. And I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll switch to masculine family because that's the way where my, my studies have been. But feminine mind generally has a connection of everything in, internally. Um, don't go that far. No, I'll stay to this one for now. Whereas men, yeah, I need to put my computer back. Hey there. I'm more like compartmentalized. Pose for a second. Can you? Oh, there you go. You're back yeah, here. it's going back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Good. So men basically being come back, and I'm a man, so I know. I can't blame, uh, our thinking is more compartmentalized because we think we're more linear thinking, whereas the feminine women generally think of more things at once. So right. when in that situation, when he was like, what happened? He wasn't focused on what was going on. He hasn't been aware of it. Mm -hmm. So not to excuse him, but to say that's probably why there was such a disconnect and why he didn't know what was going on. Right. 
and your upset was accumulation. Yeah. So there was nothing wrong with that. Just that unfortunately you didn't get to commit. You hadn't hadn't yet the skills over the years right. to stop at some point. And say, by the way, this is not working. Mm-hmm. So by the way, it's not working. By the way, it's not working. This is not working. It's like it, right. it, it has, well, it, oh it, yeah, it, seven years. Yeah. In seven years. I mean, I've said many right. times we shoot split, we shoot split. So, but this was the last call. Like okay, right. I'm, so that was what happened. So so that's that's what happened. It's okay. That's what happened. Right. The the post relationship physicality stuff you're dealing with, yes, is the toxicity from what's been accumulated. Part of it's because it's on the way out, it's releasing, because now you're free, so to speak. Right. You can now choose into more whole with support and everything else. Mm-hmm. But having that many years with a partner, it can feel very strange suddenly to be like like adrift from that, not to have that. So you it feels like you're maybe navigating how to be on your own two feet again. Yeah. Right. But we said at the beginning, um, like you were trained in the things to train or educate in psychodependency is we all are. Mm-hmm. I, I, I jokingly said that basically every love song for the last 60 years teaches us to be codependent. You know, I die if you leave, you know, you complete all these different things. So yeah. our culture is, is built for codependency. Mm-hmm. So to be independent, actually not independent, let me break that piece down in a second. Being codependent is the way our culture survives. I mean, we're codependent with our, with our government, with our businesses, with our children, with everything, because that's the way society is built. Right. This is, in a way, new learning, or learning to step back. In, again, one of the things I studied, there are three levels of relationship with other people. Or I should say, when you're in a primary relationship, the evolution relationship, the basic level, the, the most um, unaware relationship is codependent totally. In messing each other, you know, like each other has each other's puppet strings. And if you don't do this, I'll be upset. If you do this, I'll be upset, vice versa. When we mature beyond that, we start to learn independence. And this is actually the way that we've evolved the last 60, 50, 50 60 years. Independence means we have our own space, our own stuff. And we come together and meet in the middle, but it's kind of like one up, one down. It's still not functional. The ultimate level of relationship is what's called interdependent, where you have autonomy independently as yourself and you come together in a relationship where a relationship is greater than the individuals. Most mm-hmm. people haven't been trained to do that. No. So most relationships are give and take. And I know the word you were avoiding, because I'm not going to mention it here, when you're describing mm-hmm. him, but it sounded like the skills he was presenting did that. And yes, when you come from a place of feeling less than or not, not ideally worthy, and someone comes along who makes you feel that way because they give you that sense, right. you can start feeling indebted to them, feeling like mm-hmm. they love you. So that's, again, this is all normal. So it's unfortunate because it's not healthy ultimately, but it's not bad, so to speak. Right. But the relationship before him, I had a three-year relationship with someone who was even worse than him. So it was, I don't know. I would just <laughs> three <improving>? these kind <laughs> of, yeah. So I probably thought with him, like, okay, at least he's not as bad as him. That's right. Just, yeah. But I so, mean, you need to really look for why am I attracting that? You know? Right. But I so, think I figured it out. Well, okay, so the, a book I recommend, I mean, I have my own yeah. book, but a book I recommend is by yeah. um, Gay, and Katie, Gay and Kathleen Hendricks called Conscious Loving. It's been out for about 25, Loving. 30 years. Okay. It's, been, yeah, it's been out for a long, long time. Okay. There's also a book, there's also a book which I'm trying to remember the author. Um, it's, it's called, the book's called Codependent No More. It's on Amazon. I don't remember the author's name, but that's a good book as well. So those two books I recommend highly if you're dealing with okay. codependency a lot in your relationships. Yeah. Um, but Con- Conscious Loving is a great book because it really breaks down the way we fall in. Okay. That book really teaches the piece of how, how we fall in. Hi, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's, that's what, that's, those two books I recommend highly as being to, to, to untangle the codependent conversation. What so was the first one again? Hendricks, right? Hendricks? Gay, Gay and Kathleen Hendricks code, code, called Conscious Loving. They have a Conscious new version. Called, it was their book called The Conscious Heart, which I think is the update, but Conscious Loving was a book, I, it was a seminal book for me. It changed my life. Wonderful. I'm going to buy it right away. Thank you so much for You're answering welcome. my question. Absolutely. So, where were we? So, for, yeah, so forgiveness is a piece of the work that really is for you. It's about undoing the lock to the jail so you put yourself in and walking free. And back to, to Metri's point, and to, and to yours too, Malou, the, the thing about that forgiveness, it does not deal with the other person. What, what they did or didn't do isn't about them. It's up to you. So when you forgive yourself, you become free and they are whoever they are. And it doesn't, it doesn't let them off the hook, except internally in you. Also does not let you, doesn't have you forget what they did. What they did, they did, that's, been, that's done. So you still move forward and move free. But you're no longer carrying the burden of 
I'm still attached to how I feel about them. That's the freedom piece. So, okay, so what else were we talking about? Oh, there was a piece in there. No, it's gone, it'll come back. Okay, so any other questions? Mia, you want to ask a question? I think this is <laughs> cool. You're bringing us stuff that I never talk about. <laughs> I've interviewed Gay, uh, Gay and Katie. And mm -hmm. um, so I think that it's really, it was a long time ago, but I think it's really cool that you're, you're bringing up references that are absolutely right on. And thank you. <laughs> That's all oh, of course. Cool. You're welcome. I'm, I mean, I'm, I met them a couple of times years ago at like events in LA, but I read that, that book in my grad school in my grad program and right. such a game changer. So yeah, that was good. And, and the things about the thing about these books is even though uh, Gay and Katie are getting old and they're slowing down in their public appearance and stuff, their work is still profound. And so that's mm -hmm. the beauty of when we get our stuff published because our work is profound. So thank you. And a lot and our, our published, published work lives on beyond us. It does. It yes. Absolutely. Yes. I'll introduce <laughs> your stuff here. Sorry, I was just That's excited. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so anyway, I was there was a couple of thoughts that were in. I was talking with Malou, and I showed it come back to me. So give me a second as I let it regroup. Um, I so think it was me... standing up for myself. Maybe something about standing up for myself and taking my power back. I'm, I'm, gonna right. start, I'm just going to say, love you all. Thank you. He, you know, I came in to support, but I, he doesn't need my support. So. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> you guys will see me in other classes, though, for sure. <laughs> all right. Bye, Bye Mia. Bye. Bye, Mia. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so self support and <laughs> it's funny, it's like guest spot just showed up. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the thing with I mean, we're talking about forgiveness and the guilt and everything else as well. That's part of the puzzle. Self-supportive practices, especially if you are newly single or just getting yourself back on your feet, is doing things that help you basically take your power back in other ways. So as simple as doing things like affirmations or doing mantras that you do in your own life, I mean, put them on the mirror in the car, put them in the mirror in the bathroom, especially you have things you want to change in your own personal state, that they're, they're so overused, but they're still very effective. You know, in my, in my book, I have affirmations at the end of each chapter because they work. So I use them all the time. And so I'm very passionate about people using them. Even though people say, well, I've done them forever. They don't work. It's like, well, when you're in the right space to do them, like the same thing with forgiveness. To do forgiveness, you really want to have compassion for yourself energetically. So you're feeling the energy of forgiveness working. Affirmations, you don't just look at the mirror and go, I, I am this, I am this, I am this. No. Open yourself up to it first. Do some breathing. Bring yourself present because most of us aren't living in the present moment anyway. So being present with affirmations is a way to um, let's say ignite them or to, to inspire them. Um, a couple of quick things just for affirmations. When doing affirmations, first of all, make them affirmative, make them inclusive, they're first person, and make them positive. Excuse me, no, affirmative is positive. Make, make, them, so make them affirmative, make them in the, in the present moment, and first person, I think that's all three things. Yes, positive in the moment and about you. Okay, sidebar on that one. So other, thing, other practices you can do, if you're somebody who um, hasn't been doing things, like one of my things since the lockdown started happening, I've actually been exercising way more than I did before because I started baking bread. And so, because I do the sourdough thing, part of the requirement, I think when you're in there, in, certainly in California, we did that. So I, I started realizing I need to get out of the house, even though this is when we're not supposed to go out of the house. I just go for walks around the neighborhood. Now I'm going on a bike ride every day because that's part of my self support system. And so that's one of my own um, tools that I use to support my own sense of well being. So whatever you can do to do that level, physical well being is good. Um, can do it from here. Hold, just give me one second.
What happened? I think we lost him. Oh, okay. I thought it was my my uh, interview for all the horrible things you said to me. I can't do that. Okay. Yeah, it's hard. He's back. He's back. Okay, I'll move mute. I, I don't have no. I get kicked off. That was weird. You you were still here. Or did you get kicked off as well? No, only you. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. I yeah, was like, we were chatting. Us? Matt, Metri, and I were uh, chatting about the forgiveness <laughs> part because you are gone. So we thought we'll keep it going here. So oh, well, thank you. I appreciate. I appreciate you. Appreciate you carrying us. Carrying it forward. Thank you. No, that was weird. Zoom just keep me up. I'm sitting there going again. Interesting evolutionary experience. I'm sitting there going. That's interesting. Because <laughs> I was tempted to go. I'm going to get upset with this. It didn't work. It's like. Stuff happens. Technology is definitely one of these well, things that tests our patience. It's moving way, so you can expect it. We have a few I know. That. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, in case I'll, I'll I'm so, Yeah. Okay. Go I ahead. Say, so in case it happens again, I'll give you my email address. So you can reach me out if you want to get the forgiveness stuff. Um, yeah, oh yeah, simple. I need it too. Metric. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So my name, as you see in the in on, on the bottom corner, of my my thing is Barry Selby. That's my yeah. website, BarrySelby.com, and my email okay. address is Barry at BarrySelby.com. Easy. Perfect. Exactly. Make it easy. So you can just <laughs> drop me an email, say you want the forgiveness worksheets, I'll send them back to you. And if you want to check out my website, all stuff's on there as well. I, um, my book's on there. I've got online courses and everything else. Anyway, if I'm not selling anything, I agree. I'm not doing that in this group. That's one of the things that me was very firm about. So um, that's that. So yes, forgiveness is a powerful key, but I want to keep going on these self-support practices. Um, exercise definitely recommended. If you're dealing with health issues, get someone to help you out with that. You know, get checked out. Don't don't be a, a lone wolf, so to speak. You know, if you're dealing with physical stuff, again, I recommend highly doing the forgiveness work because it does release a lot of the internal toxins. Um, having compassion for yourself, as I mentioned, is one of the vehicles because we aren't always as gentle with ourselves as we could be. And so, taking the time to do nurturing things for ourselves, which can be very compassionate, where it's bubble baths. Or just spending time curled up in a nice warm blankie and read a book, you know, doing things that are very nurturing are simple things we do to support ourselves. So as, as simple as those sound, those can, be very, those can be very facilitating of letting go of guilt, shame, and other things too. Because when you start to take care of yourself, you start trusting yourself more. Because one of the biggest things in this codependent piece I mentioned at the beginning is we don't trust ourselves. We put our trust in somebody else. And that's a major no-no in this work, so to speak. So when you start to learn how to do things that are self-supportive, so you make, like you make agreements with yourself. One of my fundamental teachings with agreement keeping, so again, I learned this one years ago, is that for many of us, we don't write them down. So we say, well, I'm going to do this and this and this. And then at the end of the day, we go, yeah, wasn't I going to do something today? So make agreements with yourself. If, you want, if you're going to do things, write them down, put them in your digital calendar or your physical calendar. So you can keep agreements with yourself because we get, um, how do you say this? Our self-worth and our self-support, our self-trust increases when we keep our agreements. When we break our agreements, it goes down. So building those things into our life. So we say, I'm gonna spend some time nurturing myself today. You can make it vague. And then, you know, say if you come up a blanket or have a bubble bath, that's, that's check, you've done it. Even though it's, it sounds mechanical, it's very nurturing. So the, all these things add to your self-support and you're caring for yourself because again, the more you care for yourself, the more loving you are for yourself, the more that your um, self-esteem rises, your self-support rises. So I know I, I detour slightly, but that, these are all pieces of the puzzle to, to really help you have more self-awareness of what's happening in life. There was a piece I was still about to talk about right when I got cut off and I'm, and I'm reaching for it again. <laughs> so it's about gratitude. Um, you have the, the tools that you need for Self-forgiveness. I've got two other questions, topics coming up. I don't want to jump into those two early because those are by other calls. So I'm just leaving else I can talk about this one. It's complete. That may be it because I'm running, I'm running out of content. <laughs> That's usually my clue to start wrapping up. Any other questions you have before I sign off? Before I do wrap up? Confidence. What would you suggest for confidence? Ah, well, confidence is an interesting... Um, ball to play with because there are a lot of people who are confident who are basically ego driven this is an, oh, okay this is an interesting one to talk about i talked about this before about how and i read sidebar about how i talk about macho versus masculine for men in the work i've studied from men 
there are many men walking around all the world, you've probably met a bunch of them, who live from the neck up. They're ego-driven, and their confidence is all about, I'm better than you, I'm going to win, and, and no matter what, I'm going to be better than you. That's one form of confidence, which I don't think is real. It's actually very paper thin. For my work in doing the work, the deep masculine work, a masculine man is more below the neck, is heart-centered and a strong spine for clarity, direction, and purpose. That confidence comes from trust in himself. Now, that was the masculine piece. For feminine, confidence comes from trusting yourself the same way. But for women, it comes from trusting in your heart. I'm, I'm aware that confidence can look very like ego driven because most people it is ego driven it's a place of like i'm going to build myself up and huff up and hold my breath and be stronger and tougher and i'll be more confident no confidence comes from trusting who you are all those things are talking about self-nurturing things compassion caring about yourself they are building your sense of confidence because you know who you are for me what i think confidence is more than anything else is to know who you are to go i know i can do this or i know i can't do this either way it's confidence because you know yourself so being in the world, especially after, like in your case, Malou, talking about what you've been through, confidence is not about like being like proud, strong, fierce woman above everything else because what happened to you. It can be, but it's really just respecting who you are. Confidence comes from saying, I know who I am. I know I'm okay. Well, how do you get there? Well, some things I talked about, which is the forgiveness work. Oh, okay. Self, you know, doing nurturing practices, loving yourself, caring for yourself, doing things that keep you, keeping your agreements. One of the things, too, and I, I glossed over that one, I may go in deeper the next time, but really what I'm making about keeping agreements is that our ability to trust ourselves and prove ourselves is tied to our ability to keep our agreements. It's an internal gauge that we use, almost like a fuel gauge. The more, more, the more we keep our agreements, not necessarily the more, more agreements we keep, but the more we keep our agreements, the, the more full our gauge is, the more full our tank of self-support is. So confidence comes from that too. And... I did a quick gloss over about writing it down. I'll talk about this whole thing another time. But let me just say that just be aware of what agreements you're keeping and what agreements you're not keeping and what agreements you're making. Because you may be making agreements without realizing it to a person you're not being anymore. You may be making agreements to do things you don't want to do anymore. You may be making, you may have default agreements to a partner you're no longer with or a partner you're with you don't want to be with or whatever that is that don't suit you. So part of that is to be willing to let go of or to, to renegotiate agreements you don't want to keep anymore. Like if you're in an agreement to get up at six in the morning every day to go work out in the gym, you haven't done it for two months, maybe you want to change that agreement. I've never really thought about making agreements with myself. So I guess that's my next job to do then. Well, this is the thing. We're always making agreements because we tell ourselves we're going to do something or we tell ourselves we're not going to do something. Oh, okay. And so that's, that's the level of agreement we're talking about is that fundamental piece because when you start to get that um, mi not microscopic, but if you get to that, that level, you start to realize that we are governing our own self-esteem through that. Mm, okay. And again, this comes from training, like you said about, you know, how you were trained to be codependent. This is another piece of the puzzle because we are, we are the product of our parents oftentimes and then our relationships as well. So a lot of this is really undoing the programming we took on because our parents didn't know better. Again, this is the mm -hmm. thing we can get to judgment, we can be awareness. Our parents, I mean, my parents I'm grateful for, they did the best they could with what they had. I didn't, I wasn't happy with everything they did, but I couldn't change that. And I'm grateful I got raised in a family. I'm thankful that I was raised in a family that stayed together. Now I didn't know that wasn't normal until I was an adult. So I didn't have comparisons going on. A lot of people go through divorced families. But the thing is, I know families that were much more fulfilling than mine was. Mine was okay. So I'm just aware of that. But I also realized that I learned about relationships through that model, and which was actually dysfunctional, I found out afterwards. So I'm now, I've done a lot of rewiring, thankfully, over the years of learning what is workable, what isn't. And agreement keeping is something we take on automatically because, you know, be home before dark from your parents or, or do your homework or oh. eat your greens, all those things. Those are agreements too. It may be orders, you know, but they're still agreements. I never thought of it. I've had a very robotic marriage life. So it's like, mm -hmm. do, 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 I need to do this. So now I'm like going with the flow. People say, what are you going to do today? So I don't know. We'll see. So <laughs> that's why I probably need to <laughs> set some goals or something. Well, the thing about that is that though is also is to be aware that that's okay. It isn't wrong that you don't have agreements right now. That you're being free, free and flowing. It's okay. In fact, you may be needing that to reset yourself. Right. So, so it's not about you must have agreements. That's the other thing you said is about making too many agreements. 
is being aware of what choices you've made. Because you might say, you know, I'm doing, trying to, I'm committed to, I'm committed to too many things today. I need to say no to these three things so I can actually make my day work. So if you need to make one agreement or no agreements for the day, that's okay too. Right. So it's not it's lovely to, to flow into it. Like, like yesterday, I came home and it's like, wow, what a beautiful day. I'm going to go for a bike ride. I was gone for an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. And then today, now it's raining, so I'm not going to bike ride. <laughs> so <laughs> I love it. I let exactly. someone else speak. I feel bad that I'm saying That's something. okay. <laughs> Apart from you and Metri, nobody else seems to be wanting to talk, so that's okay. <laughs> I don't know. Is there anyone else who wants to speak? Nope. That may okay. be it. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. This has been very, very helpful. I had never thought of forgiveness from this point of view, and this makes it a lot easier as I'm thinking and processing it. Yeah. Good. I'm glad I could help you. So again, drop me an email if you want to get the worksheets. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's about it. That I, again, this is all like the loose ends of what I was talking about earlier. I do have another time in, the, in um, March 10th is my next one. So a month from now, I'll be back again. And okay. uh, different, different topic then. Again, if you want to drop me an email in the meantime, you can check out my website. Oh, I, actually, um, I have one last question. Yes, yes, yes. You talked about affirmations, you know, like it's good oh, to yes. have affirmations. I do do affirmations. That's what I've been doing every night. And I have things printed out actually to remind me um so what's a good forgiving forgiveness affirmation like you know if you could suggest something just a general one um i I struggle with coming up my own affirmation is what i'm trying to say (laughs) yeah (laughs) well again affirmations being in the present about ourselves and affirmative then an affirmation about forgiveness would be something on the lines of um i'm grateful let me think how i say how do i say it I say always say I forgive everyone who did um, did me wrong. That that has that ends no, on. Not the, good. <laughs> well, it's like the thing again. Forgiveness is letting yourself. Forgiving yourself, yourself right? Yeah. So I would say something. I would affirm something in the in the phrasing would be. Um, boy, you put me on the spot now. I think well, <laughs> that's a good one. To use. Um, I forgive myself. I I, I, or... I, embrace, I, embrace, I embrace forgiveness to set myself free. I am for great example. forgiveness to set myself free. Great. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I forgive myself for attracting the wrong man in my life. No, so that's the, no, that's the thing, Malou. You don't want to affirm <laughs> negative stuff because the same. Oh, okay. Okay. See the, Okay. A little, a little quick teaching, just a little piece before I sign off. Um, there's a there's a quote from um, Henry Ford. Henry Ford said basically, like you know, if you think you can, if you think you can't, you're right. Wait, that's too fast. If you Sorry, think you if, can, if you can, or you think you can't, you're right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what it means is that whether you say that you do want this or you don't want this, you still get this. Wow. So that's when you so, so when you say that you you forgive yourself for choosing the wrong man, you're focusing on the wrong man. So you still attract that. Oh. You're saying. So that's what I'm saying. You forgive yourself to set yourself free. That's an affirm- affirmation that's positive, uplifting. So they're, 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 they're tricky, but very simple when you start seeing the way it works. Okay. So, so again, affirmations are positive, not negative. Right. Okay, you're right. Because I embrace, of, that, that, again, I embrace. I embrace forgiveness to set myself free. That's just a throw. That's just one idea. Yeah, okay. Because that's, because that's stating a state you want to be in and where you want to end up. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Metri, for asking me. You put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, Metri did. <laughs> oh, this forgiveness oh, stuff is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, thank you, thank you so much, Barry. Absolutely. Let me say, if you want to, if you and if so, and that next to PS, then if you want to write some affirmations down, and if you want to send them to me for for verification, make sure they sound okay. <laughs> I'll put that in quotes. I'm like, so you have to. If you want to send me those, I'll I'll look at them and give you some feedback if you want. Oh, that would yeah. be great. Thank you. That would be great. Sure. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Yeah. All right. So again, email okay. is Barry at barryshelby.com. Um, I'll be back in in a month. You or speak four weeks. really fast. Barry yes. Shelby. Barry at barryshelby.com. Thank you for nudging me and reminding me to slow down. I was so in it. I was okay. Barry at Shelby.com or I'm no, in MMT. No, no. Barry at barryshelby.com. Okay, got it. There's no H. There's no H. It's Selby. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. Thank you so much. You're Have welcome. A great so afternoon. You too. Take care of yourselves. See you in a few weeks. Okay. Enjoy tomorrow's speaker. Yeah.
Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everyone. Bye.